It's trash day, I'm putting you out, it's trash day. Putting you out, it's trash day. Putting you out of my mind. It's trash day, I'm putting you out, it's trash day. I'm putting you out, trash day, I'm putting you out of my mind. Now I'm gonna clean up, now I'm gonna clean up, now I'm gonna clean up the house. Taking all your garbage, taking all your garbage, taking all your garbage. What I'd like to have right now is for all you podcast listening sweat hogs, keep the noise down while we take off our robe and give the ladies a good look at the sexiest podcasters alive. It's can crusher time. Wow, you pulled that one out from the mid-80s, roughly? Kind of ravishing, isn't it? It was very ravishing. Maybe a little rude. Uh, Uh, Mark uh, Martinez uh, alongside Paul Bullers. Welcome to episode number nine of Can Crushers. Paul, we're getting set for the Perfect Ten next week, but that's next week. Perfect Ten. Yep, we did it. Hands are in the air. Uh, Welcome aboard, everybody. Uh, just chat a little bit about Facebook. Facebook's blown up in the last week. Great conversations during the event. So uh, we're going to keep that going. I'll get something going so we can chat all the time. Pat Lapino, Mark Lohr, Mike Swanson, Reside, I mean, everybody's stepping in on Monday and Tuesday nights to give us beef most of the time. Well, yeah, I don't blame them. You deserve it most of the time. Me, so, me not so much. Uh, I'm I'm just glad that I can finally comment under my name, right? Instead of Can Crushers, and then having to hyphenate it, Paul. Can Crusher <laughs> Paul. <laughs> so uh, I'm gonna start off with the rise real quick. Then we'll get into the beer, which is it's cooling down and it looks delightful. Are you kidding me? We're gonna go right into wrestling and not crack a beer first. Yeah. What kind of a podcast do you think this is? All right. Hey, Mark. I'm cracking the beer. It is a beer time on the podcast, and it is from Ellicottville Brewing Company in Ellicottville, New York. They started in 1995. I know you've been there. I have actually have not been to Ellicottville. <laughs> what? Yet. Well, I, I don't know if you know it, but 340 pounds should not be on a set of skis. Well, I'm not there for skiing. Well, I go just for the brewery. It's a nice little town. It's got a, nice, uh, a lot of other bars that... I've been way too drunk in Ellicottville. Well, <laughs> at least you're honest about it, and that's I, what's good. Um, we got the stainless steel IPA, uh, American style, 7% alcohol per volume. It's a, a complex hot profile. Uh, I, Rosini bitterness, I don't know what yep. that means. I'm excited to try this, actually, just because it says stainless steel on it. And that's why I actually pulled it out of the fridge. We have a couple in there, and this was the one that uh, I wanted to pull out. It says on the website, it's bold and deep, juicy, flowery, stainless steel, bridges the gaps between everyday IPA and something much more complex. Citrus rind, light floral notes, heavy malt, and complex hop provide profile and deliver bitterness with a a captivating result. What do you think? Oh, that face. You just made me really thirsty. Can we quit talking about it and just take a drink of it? Okay. There is a bitter bite. Oh, yeah. It's definitely yeah. a bitter bite, and it's definitely an IPA. Yeah, it's an American-style IPA. 7% alcohol, one of the stronger ones we've had recently. Um, That's a tough beer. I'm, it's, I don't know. I'm not I'm, I'm not 100% not, on it, but I'm going to drink gonna, it. We're not going to pull punches on Can Crushers. I don't know if this has been my favorite. This is not one of my favorites. Not at all. It, it, it's... It, Tastes like stainless steel. <laughs> if stainless steel had a taste, then this would be it. I would know what... Oh, the second drink takes a little bite back. So I want to get into Rise. Uh, episode 8 dropped last week on Rise Ascent. Again, I'll plug it every week. It's four ninety nine, folks. Get it. It's worth it. It's awesome. They're in Chicago for, like I think, the next six or seven tapings. Only two matches on it, but there's a lot of buildup. It started with Tessa coming out, you know, she just won the championship the night before, and she's calling out Mercedes saying, hey, let's go again. You you brought it to the limit in the the Ironman match, so she's ready. She's ready. Kicks it back to Mercedes, and she is a livid Latina. Just, you know, hotter than Mexican jumping beans on a grill. I don't know what the hell that means, but 
She's pissed. You you could say that kind of stuff because you have Mexican descent. I would say that. That would be racist. That's not. But go ahead. Keep going. Right. So it sets up for, I, I think it's going to be great. I really do. Um, then it rolls over into Soraya Knight and Kikio. What a match. The referee just stood there. Kikio was getting choked out, beaten with anything and everything, and the ref was like, nothing. Serena Knight's a veteran. Like, she can do pretty much do whatever, and she doesn't care. No, she doesn't. Her shirts, yeah. I will not say what her shirt says. Look it up, and it's it's rough. I know we're explicit, but I just, that, even, that word even bothers it's, me. Yeah, that's not, a, that's not a word that we use explicitly. No. It rolls into the... The Y, Brit Y, if you know why we're asking that, yeah, I'm not going in order. That's just the way I remembered them. Um, Britt turned on Chelsea Green in the tag team match for the the Paradise, uh, the championship, nonetheless. And they had an interview with Britt, and she said she carried the team. They were on a winning streak, then they ended up being on a losing streak, and Chelsea was the one losing. Britt got them into the finals, and then she's just sick and tired of Chelsea. Well, welcome to Pittsburgh. There are no freeloaders here. Right? Wow. You must have watched it. I was looking over your shoulder when you were sitting at the at the building while we were watching it. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, you did hear it. Uh, main event for the for the episode is Paradise Lost Tag Team Champions, and they defend against probably my favorite women's tag team right now. I love these two. Holiday and Thunder Rosa which are collectively known as Twisted Sisters. <laughs> I mean, it they, their face paint was pretty cool, candy skulls, and it was it was a good match from what I remember seeing over your shoulder. Yeah, we, we, I watched it last Thursday. It always drops Wednesday, so kind of Thursday lunch, I'll take a half an hour and watch it. Upcoming events I want to talk about. IWC Cage Carnage is August 11th. That's in Elizabeth once again. But one that we're trying to get a few people to go to with us. I know I'm going to go. Paul's moving stuff around. Uh, he's going to try getting to August 25th. Uh, Asylum Pro Wrestling in Clearfield. Uh, check it out. No match is set yet, but it's in Clearfield. We're gonna, we want to go locally just to see if we can get, you know, a group, five, six of us to go and represent Can Crushers. This is more of an adult thing. It is. I'm guessing because there there's some chair shots. There's some brutality. Maybe some blood. There are some school. words. I've, I've reached out to the guy, and he said there is going to be some words and stuff. So Not saying that you can't bring your kids, but it, it's just not really that kid-friendly yet. I mean, little... I'm not bringing E. E's not going to come because we're going to partake in a few beverages beforehand. And hopefully a few afterhand. Right. So... All right, uh, that's what'd you do last weekend? Anything? Nothing? No, uh, volleyball tournament in Kersey... It was a good three-on-three volleyball tournament, free. I mean, hats off to the Parks Program over in Kersey, PA. Thank you for having us. It was it was a fun time. I mean, and three-on-three volleyball is not fat guy friendly. I ran a lot. It was tough. I wish somebody would have videoed that. That's where Autumn and Teresa need to step it up. And when we get video for the podcast, that's <laughs> gonna, that'll be a train wreck. We went to Binghamton. We finally got to see the Rumble Ponies. Uh Actually, we went to see Tim Tebow because uh, we, we like him. I mean, we like what he stands for. Best baseball player? No, but I give him his props. As an athlete, he's a hell of an athlete. Yeah. And I, and I like his I like his <laughs> love for God. Right. And so we'll take a break and we'll be right back. Somebody's at the door. We'll be right back. Titans, go! When the Teen Titans go to the movies, they know the best way to travel is safely. Hollywood, here we come! Roger! To keep your child safe, be sure to use the right car seat for their age and size. Exactly. We're finally on the big screen. Have a seat, my dude. For more information on finding the right seat, visit NHTSA.gov slash the right seat. Gotcha. That's a wise move. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. I know we normally start out with a beer, but I'm glad that you went right into the rise thing there, Mark, because now that we're doing raw... The very special announcement, first thing on Raw, we had Triple H, Vince, and Stephanie in the, McMahon in the ring, and uh, it, they announced the pay, all-women's pay-per-view. Evolution, the end of October. I'm pumped for it. Nassau Coliseum, I, if I had the funds, I'd go. I'll I'm, tell you. I'm excited. 
because the women deserve this push. They, they've they been working their tails off. And most of the time, the women's matches are better than the men's matches. I will agree with you wholeheartedly, Paul. I, the, SmackDown, I actually only watch for the women. Um, I love AJ and stuff, and we'll get into that later, but I, I love what they're doing with the women. I really do. A little kickback on the internet, though, as we have a little more time this week, not a lot going on at the end of the show. Um... A lot of people blew up WWE because WWE said first ever women's pay-per-view. And, yeah, it is for them. And I'm not the one saying it, but there, there's Rise, there's Shimmer, there's other uh, you know independents that have done it. I don't think they should have said first ever, meaning... And I don't think they meant... No, but they meant for them. Right. I mean... And you know what? It, it's all... Chicken shit. Right, that's what it is. It's it's people wanting to complain about something. Right, and they got they got their way to complain about something. This is beneficial from WWE down to the lowest indie that we don't know about. It helps women out across the board, and I think it's awesome. Right, I do too. Uh, and Triple H said it. He said, um, "You guys are carrying the ball. Like this is you. You've been blowing the roof off." Yeah. Let's stay with it and give everybody a hell of a show. And I, and they're with the women in the WWE right now. That should be no problem, right? And they're bringing back some of the they're old fi- school people. Fifty plus women are going to be at not in matches, but at this. You know, yeah. Then now forever, whatever you know, tomorrow, whatever they're they're saying is they did announce that there's going to be more or less like five title matches. Well, five big matches: the Raw Women's Title, the SmackDown Women's Title, the NXT Title. The final of the May Young Classic, which that's going to be held over for a long time because that's actually taking part at the beginning of August. So now you're waiting to have the championship tournament match then. And the UK women's uh, title will be defended that night as well. Throw in a lot of other stuff. I, I'm sure you're going to have a great three-hour pay-per-view. I'm really hoping that maybe we see the women's tag team division fire up. I think so. There's a lot of time in between. What is that? Two months. Two months. Two and a half months on paper, whatever. So that's enough time to do something, which leads me into where I want to go with Sasha and Bailey when we get there. It really does. Okay. But did you? I know you've been nonstop listening to Elias's new CD. The first day it dropped, the four songs are amazing. It and Elias just wanted to play them for us, but they didn't get a chance to because the Deleters of World came out and interrupted Elias before he got a chance to sing. And B Team took it to him. They, he, they did, and once again, I know we're beating a dead horse. Bray did nothing. I, I he. But it, 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 he's got to rest up. I get it. But why put him in? Why put him out there? Like, right to get hurt more. Right. Save the if match. He's hurt. Save the match for SummerSlam then or something. I'm, but I think they're setting up. It, it's on. You see it, Paul. It's going to be Bray and Hardy real quick again. Oh yeah. This is going to blow up. And the downfall is who is the B team? Who do they have on Raw? Uh, there's a couple good tag teams on Raw, and you'll see some good. You'll see some better matchups. I mean, Authors of Pain are coming up. Yeah, that's who I was going to pick. I mean, later on in, during Bra, they were out there and said they were done with Titus O'Neil and Apollo Crews, and guess what? They, they weren't, weren't done. They weren't done. Apollo and Titus had something to say about it. I didn't even write that down. That was so quick. I'm sorry. I, that's all right. But I'm glad you brought it up, and that's it. Yeah. Speaking of tag teams, the Boss Huggers. Yeah, I, I like... That they're back together again, but they're teasing us way too much. SummerSlam, are they going to have the match? Or are they going to hold it over now until October? And this is where, with them lovey-dovey, I think they're going to be the first tag team champions. That might be, you might be correct. But we we all want to see them wrestle before we want to see them be championship. Oh, without it. I want to, yes. Yeah. yeah. So. They took on two locals, Samantha and Ka- Karen. I don't know who they. I don't know. I don't know who them. they are. I don't, I don't know where they were. You it was know, a from. pretty easy victory oh, for the boss. Really and easy the victory. Hugger. It was just to show that they're back together on the same page. Up next, Elias again coming out wanting to let us hear him sing from those chords, but not with the monster in the bank in the house, right? And Braun comes out and just you know says he wants to be Universal Champ. 
Well, he deserves it, right? He does. He's got the he's got the contract. He's got the monster in the bank contract. Ko makes his way out, starts chatting. So so sorry for Ko. So sorry for Ko. Corbin comes out, says you need a little help. So he sends Jinder Mahal, who's a peacekeeper, and now Damase. Uh, all of a sudden, he's back to the peacekeeper thing. I don't like that. Make Jinder a bad guy. I think he's the perfect bad guy. Jinder is the perfect. Well, that's because we're old school wrestling fans, no, and it's it's that's something that we say. It's always America versus everybody, right? Because we're Americans. I mean that. It's that's not Joe. that we hate everybody, but it's right. It's way it is. It, I don't know. Uh, I really didn't care for the segment, and eh, I like to watch people get whooped on by the, the monster. He's well, the yeah, boy. that's fine. Next up was Nat. She took on Max Moon. I mean, Max um, Moon, Ooh. Mickey James. What is this? A nineteen eighties uh, tribute it's, show? It's got that outfit she had on. You tell me that didn't look like Max Moon. Welcome to the podcast. This is where Mark talks about fashion, not wrestling. Right? It was horrid. It was <laughs> god-awful. Mickey gets the win. Bliss gets involved. Gets laid out, though, as well. Nat, back on the back burner. Ah, uh, And you're a Nat fan. I am a Nat fan. Well, the old Heart Foundation, Nat. Oh, well. Yeah. Yeah. After a Rome interview, saying, you know, Dad of the Year, ESPN Award, this award, that award, Elias comes back out again. Yeah. And they were interrupted by Authors of Pain. We went through that already. Right. Up next, Bree, uh, Tyler Breeze versus Mojo Raleigh. Mojo looking tough. He, he is. But it's... But I don't see where he can get in. For what? He can't get into the Intercontinental picture. Well, he can if he beats the fabulous one. Glorious one. Why do I keep saying fabulous? You love Michael Hayes. I do like Michael Hayes. Right. He can, but I, around Seth Rollins or around Ziggler or even put it on McIntyre... I don't think Mojo is anywhere near that. Not yet. He will be. I mean, but he just started out. It's not like he's been in the company for years and years like Ziggler and, and I mean. Right. Bobby has just been, he's. He's old. He's old. <laughs> he's old. Next, Elias tries again. But, uh, Baylor Club. Come, Baylor Club. Baylor Club. Baylor Club. Wow. Well, I cannot speak today. Wow. Good thing it rained this morning. I know, right? My brain's soggy. Finn Balor versus Drew McIntyre. Uh, what, what did you think? I thought it was horrible. Why? Well, because there's the same freaking spot that happens every week. Somebody comes out. The other person comes out. Interference. The GM of whatever, because it's happened in the last month, I bet you, five or six times. And it's instantly a tag team match. Yeah. I Throw a different spot in. Make it a... A four-way match. Throw them both out. Make it, a, you know, something else besides a tag team match. Right. It happens every week, and I'm just... It's generic writing. It's easy writing. Uh, same thing. <laughs> After the tag team, Seth and Balor win. You know, that that's it. Next up is Ember Moon against Liv. Ember wants to get back on the winning streak as she lost to Logan last week, but she's already beaten Liv twice, so she gets to fight Liv again to maybe fight Logan again down the line. I don't know where this is going. I don't know. It was just a showcase of them again. Um, Ember wins. Which, good. So right. now, now what? Three weeks ago, I loved this match. And when, then two weeks ago, you liked this match. Last and week, then, I was okay with Logan winning. Right. Now I don't want to see this match. I'm, again. I'm done. I'm done. Give me somebody else. I mean, Ruby, Ruby Riot's still on the shelf. Maybe she comes back and causes some havoc soon, but eh, I don't know. So Seth gets his uh, uh, SummerSlam matches. Boom, 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 boom. We're just throwing them all over the place. Well, yeah, I, which is nice because now we can build off of that. Or are there, there going to be changes? Well, there might be changes. And, which is some nice. of them. I think some of the bigger ones. Oh yeah, because we already have Kevin Owens versus Braun Strowman in the. Money in the Bank uh, briefcase match. Like, winner gets the briefcase. I, I have a great scenario for that already, but I want to save it for down the line. We'll save it for down the If line. I remember. So Elias comes out again. And he's interrupted by Angle. Just so Angle can say, hey, this is your time finally. And Elias gets pissed. And he's like, I'm not singing for these mutants or whatever he calls them. And he leaves. Well, 
I mean, I like Elias. I love we, Elias. We walk with Elias on this podcast. We, we want to see him go places, but... He's going to. He's he, he's going to get there. I really think he gets in that... Once the Universal title is actually relevant, I think he gets there. Yeah. I, I think he does. I think he's bigger than the IC title right now. I, 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 I think you're right. This sets up for Bob against Roman. The writing's on the wall. You have it written down as boob. Well... I was writing fast. I only have like 20 minutes before you get here. Oh, well. Uh, boob, Bob. Boob versus Roman, and that's exactly what it was. It was Boob versus yeah. Roman. Yeah, there was a lot of miscues in this match, I, I thought. Neither one of these two are... I, see, I don't... I, I've i been back and forth on this, but neither one of these two are technically sound wrestlers. <laughs> you don't say. And neither one has mic skills. Nope. So why pu- push them so hard? I don't. I don't know. But why not push him to make him better? One needs to go with Paul Heyman when Brock leaves. Oh, for sure. One needs to go with Paul Heyman. But I don't know if Paul will take anybody. I think he's done. I think he's. I think he's going to step back for a while too. I really do. All right, over to SmackDown. SmackDown's quick. It really. There's a lot of, for me, nonsense on SmackDown. There's oh. not a lot of, legit something that you can dig into for no. me. Randy starts and he's telling everybody. It's our fault that he's pissed off at the world for 16 years. We haven't supported him. And he started as a legend killer, turned into the Viper. He only wants to be known by RKO now. You're a legend killer. I'm a legend killer. Mike Swanson's a legend killer. And we're all legend killers now. I, I don't get this. I, I do get it because it's a heel turn and Randy's always going to be a good heel. But well, yeah, he's loved. He's loved. He's a loved heel. Yeah. Uh, and he calls out Jeff, and he says, hey, I put you on the shelf. But later on in the show, Shinsuke says, I got my eye on you too, Randy. Is Hardy going to be healthy enough? It's going to be a triple threat match at, at SummerSlam, I would have to believe. I would think. Where, where else are they going with this? Right, that all three of them are in, intermixed. Uh, next is... No, no, no! None of that this week. Why? It didn't happen. Well, it's always gonna. Ha- it's always Rusev Day, no matter whether it didn't. Lana happen. is the manager, Go ahead. or Go ahead. Nope. nope, nope. I'll sit here and drink this beer and let the time run. For the next- Rusev Day, whether Lana's the manager or Aiden English, Aiden English is the manager. <laughs> Soggy it's always, bottom boy. It's always Rusev Day. Well, Rusev ends up. Um, Inner, he loses to Almas. I wow, he loses to Almas, which we both said in the back of the truck. Almas is going to be something. Almas can be a contender, and I think he's going to be a contender sooner than later because last week he had a good match against AJ. Yep. This week was a decent match with Rus- Rusev. Rufus, it keeps coming out. <laughs> Holy moly! Well, for Paige's special announcement, in the back of my mind, I thought maybe he was going to be one. There was three that I thought could have gotten there, and we'll get there in a second. But Rusev loses a match. Aiden English comes out to save Lana, who gets uh, involved with Vega, almost his manager. And once again, Aiden takes the bump. One, two, three. Rusev loses. That's going to be the pre-show match, I think, for SummerSlam. I I think you're probably right. Hey, we'd like to welcome back R-Truth for about 30 seconds. Uh, Yeah. Joe wins. Small Joe smoked him. Yeah, hey, our truth hasn't had a match since WrestleMania. Really? I know he's been. I think he's been hurt. Or right, on his, but I haven't missed him. But I've thought I've seen him a lot. You do see him in uh, backstage, interviews, yeah. backstage stuff. Yeah, whatever. Oscar versus Billy Kay. This is finally Oscar getting back on a winning track. It is. It, it really is, and I can't not talk bad about the Iconics. I love them. I love the Mean Girl persona that they have. There's somebody in the tag team title hunt too. That's oh. that's when that's why I say we need tag team titles for the women. Yes, they would make a good heel team. If you think but about they're it, loved. the they're Riot loved. Squad, you have the Iconics, Absolutions, the, I, Absolutions the Boss Huggers. Kind, yeah, Absolutions kind of done. They're but absolved, you, but still they're together. Yeah. So there's enough, and then there's still solos out there like. You keep Alicia Fox. You bring up some from NXT. You know, Nikki Cross was on Raw. You know, that's just because she's traveling with Sanity right now. Mm-hmm. But nonetheless. Um, so Paige does come out to make the special announcement. And For you whose? love this. 
for who's going to be the... Ne- James Ellsworth. Well, yeah, the next cont- uh, contender for the WWE title. Yeah, James Ellsworth says me. And Paige says, you're fire. That was a good McMahon that you both did, by the way. She did a good one and you did one. Well, I mean, I've been practicing all day. I, I know you have. So this is actually where I thought the whole Miz thing was going to come in. I, yeah, this, this was his match for SummerSlam. I thought it was either going to be the Miz. I thought maybe Rusev was going to get another shot. Or Almas. This or Almas. I, I thought they were going to throw a surprise card and throw Almas in there since they had such a great match last week and Paige was watching. And with my quotes. I have quotes every week. Yes, quotes, but nobody can see a quote on a podcast. But we were thrown to the loop because as they're carrying El- Ellsworth out of there, here comes Samoa Joe, Kohina Clutch. Done. Puts AJ to sleep and signs the contract. And I love it. Uh, I've watched wrestling a lot. You have too. They had great matches in TNA. They really did. This should be one of the better matches. At SummerSlam. Which is good that they're finally using Joe, because yeah. he's been hit or miss. Uh, yeah, he, he really has been. Roll it up. Next is Mella against Becky. Becky wins. She gets her championship match at SummerSlam. You know what happens to money in straight fire. Straight fire wins. Straight fire wins. So, with the disarmor, writing was on the wall for that one. Uh, next match is part of the tag team tournament to find out the number one contender, and it's New Day against Sanity. And we were both baffled by this. Yeah, I mean, I thought they were pushing Sanity hard, and then all of a sudden, boom, New Day wins. Right. Okay. But at the end of the match, the teams for next week, both are around. The Usos were actually on commentary. Usos' commentary was pretty funny. They are. Funny. They're funny. That, they're was, funny. that was very good. I like, it's not new, but I like the, the one-day-ish thing compared to their... Islander type Usos. I, this Uso, phenomenal. You both, you said it. I said it. I think the bar is the, the bar one. is coming back. I they're going to be number one contenders. But I just don't know if they're they're going to be the ones to take out the Bludgeon Brothers. I don't think. I, I think the Bludgeon Brothers keep it for a bit. I really do. And don't get me wrong, Cesaro and Sheamus, two of the toughest guys in WWE, pound for pound, actually the strongest guys. Jim Ross is here yeah. today. In a slobber knocker, I'd not want to see either one of these guys. I would be okay if they broke up. I want to see Cesaro in a... Championship hunt? Yeah. Same. Sheamus, too. I like Sheamus. Yeah. Um, I just don't know what they're going to do with him. Um, I hope that if they break up, it's they not... They just a, got new shirts. No way in hell they're breaking up yet. on out thing. They're not breaking up. They just got new shirts. Uh, the wrap off SmackDown is the premiere of Miz TV. It was ten. It was a ten minute commercial for the show to follow SmackDown. Yeah, welcome to Miz and Mrs. USA Network on Tuesdays after ten o'clock sm- SmackDown. Ten o'clock. I'm not watching you, Miz. I didn't watch you on the reality show on MTV. What was no. it? The Real World. Yep, I didn't either. Yep, I didn't see you there. I'm not going to see you, Miz and Mrs. It, it sets up for Daniel Bryan. He comes out. Da, 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 Daniel Bryan, Miz. It's already signed, but we don't know it yet. Wait, can we talk about Miz throwing a baby? Even if it was a fake baby? And we knew it was a fake baby the whole time because nobody has a baby strap that tight to their chest. Right? Well, I think you will. Yeah, well, no, probably not. I got big arms. I can hold it. Aww. <laughs> Hugger. Aww. Hugger. So, Daniel Bryan, Miz, that's setting it up. Throw it out. We'll be back. Uh, final segment today. Why was the basketball court all wet? Because the players kept dribbling on it. The dad joke. <laughs> Corny, grown worthy, but also one of the simplest ways to share a moment with your kids. What did the buffalo say when he dropped his son off for school? Bye, son. <laughs> so take a moment to make your kid laugh. Because dad jokes rule. Make your kid laugh today. Go to fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. Hey, Paul. What's the best season to sell Life Alert? I don't know. Fall. Oh, my God. Dad jokes. Welcome back to Can Crushers. Mark Martinez, Paul Bullers. So, end of the show. Uh, just want to rant. Well, what's annoying you right now on the world of wrestling? You got something on your mind. Uh... This was just thrown at him, by the way, too. Yeah, this is just thrown at me. I don't know. I don't really know. Um, mostly the writing and just the same old, same old every time. That's exactly what I was... I mean, it, 
honestly, it, it's just the repeat matches. You have a plethora of talent in the back that you don't see every week. No, you're using them on, I mean, even to bring up some, some of the 205 Live guys and have 205 latches, matches on Raw and SmackDown. Or some of the guys that you don't see that are on WWE main event. Right. And we don't, I mean, we watch that kind of stuff, but we don't really talk about it on the podcast. Because it's not, I don't want to say it's not relevant, but it, they're just matches thrown together. Right. They, they really are. And it's whoever is traveling that week and not on the main roster, because you know the, the Raw and SmackDown are the main rosters. Sometimes you just get a break and you get to do main event for a week and then you have the other six days off. Yes. But... But do we want it extended, like hours wise? No, no, not at all. No, I, I would like to see him push more of a like two hundred five live. Would you watch it if it wasn't ten o'clock on Tuesdays? Would you watch it if it was maybe before SmackDown? I, I probably would because it, even for an hour, right? It, yeah, I'm fine with that. I would like it. You know, your competition's TNA. Go head to head with them on Thursday night. Yeah, make me watch T uh, Smack not Smack Two Hundred Five Live. Then find a crazy channel to put it on. I don't care. That doesn't bother me. Like I'll find that channel. Right. But if if you have it on regular TV and not the network, right, it'll be a different story. And it's the same thing with NXT. I watch it. We don't cover it much. Uh, once in a while, we'll talk about Adam Cole or something. But baby, <laughs> but it, it's it. Uh, what I want to push for, and I think it's going to happen next year, and I really do, I hope the women get their own show. I think you're going to see it coming. Um, I don't know about the whole the whole show, though. I don't know if they can... An hour. They can maybe pull not an hour. hour. Yes. The downfall is, and I'm going to steal what Pat Lapino said Monday night, because I put this on Facebook Monday night. You might lose ratings on Raw or SmackDown if you take the women off of them. And do they really care about ratings anymore? I don't know. I, it, I, the buy rights and this and that. I mean, they're against nothing. The only time they really care about it is probably Monday Night Football. Right. Right now, you're against repeats. So, whatever. Hey, don't forget, stop down and see Dom. Oh, yeah. Patalino's Place 2, 814-772-7576. The official pizza chop of the Can Crushers. They are hardworking down there. They do... Everything they can to take care of their customers, love them. Listen, you can listen to us on iTunes, on Stitcher, Overcast, Alexa, TuneIn Radio, Google Play, Castboy. I'm going to need a drink of beer if I keep going, but Spotify. Yeah. You can find us. on uh, we, we tag everything, both on Facebook, Paul put great pictures on Instagram, I'll throw the podcast link up on Twitter as well. And you can always email us. Email- Cancrusher69 at gmail.com. Wow, you got that in quick. Cancrusher69 at gmail.com. Thanks again this week for the great conversation on Facebook. Keep it going. Here it is, garbage tip of the week. I wanted to do oh this. Oh my God, how did I skip that? Well, I mean, I am kind of pushed forward on yeah, everything else. That's it. But garbage tip of the week, kind of want this to be the last thing you hear before we sign off. Um, and then we'll, I mean, we'll put a lid on it after we're done with Garbage Tip of the Week. Oh. Oh. What do you think Garbage Tip of the Week is, Mark? The lids that are on garbage cans. Detachable lids. Don't bungee strap them on it, zip tie them or something. It One, it's messing with the integrity of the can, and if it cracks a little bit more, we get blamed for it. Oh, yeah. We get blamed instantly. Boom. You got, you're you, too rough with my garbage cans. Well, you just drilled a hole in it. <laughs> I didn't ruin the integrity of your can. You did. And when we dump them... That can lid flops all over the place. There's nothing I like better than getting hit in the face with a can lid. And in the winter, they're froze. And they're harder than a rock. And not when I'm on my trampoline wrestling my buddies. Right? You Wrestling buddies, by the way. Remember those? I, I do remember I had those. a couple of them. <laughs> um, so, yeah, just don't... If, if it's a detachable lid... Leave it detachable. That's right. Uh, remember, just because you're gar, just because you are that, trash. That, that. Okay, remember, just because you are trash doesn't mean you can't do great things. It is a garbage can, not a garbage cannot. Have a good week, everyone.